Greetings and welcome to In Depth. I'm DK Ronstar. We are here literally because of Patsy's Split Channel. We actually got a response from the prop stylist Michael Sturgeon as to how that bottle emerged on the set of the Esquire shoot with Pedro Pascal. And he was saying that there was no one from Trinidad and Tobago on the set, but he has spent a great deal of time at Gaspri Caves, down the islands. He has grown to love the snack. He had a bottle on hand, so he said, why not? You're sharing the love. So from that, we are once again speaking with the general manager of Film TT, Les Leanne wills Caton for more on the potential of product placement. And that is an easy one to see in the sense that we have we have Marshall saying, okay, well, it's my video, I share it to Destro, but it's also my chocolate, so we're putting that in there. But to, we welcome you, Leslie Ann, and thank you so much for making the time. And let's let's start from the split channel. So a, a fulsome response in terms of like, what are some of the things that go through your mind when you see this uh, on a stage that is a little larger than Trinidad and Tobago? Yes, thank you so much for having me. It was quite a fascinating development to see, especially hearing the reason of how it reached on the scene. Now, the beauty of product placement and why I love the explanation, he loves the product. And this is what we try to talk to when we talk to manufacturers and service providers or even persons when filmmakers go to get the product in a film. First, they're be that brand alignment from the love and the affection. And so when, when you see a product on the big screen, the intention wasn't necessarily from an advertising perspective, but this is me in everyday life. And so when we go to companies to or to partner with the manufacturers to say, we can use your product, this is showing a sense of realism and it's showing a slice of life. And so I love that that's how the Patsy channel got onto the scene. And that's exactly what we talk about in terms of product placement and partnering with the film industry. That was interesting because there was conversation, people say they see in a price tag on it, they're wondering, and, and they were suggesting which supermarket the persons got it from, the fact that, that there was stuff from, it wasn't full, so people were consuming it, and it takes us so much further. But when, when we talk about product placement, if we wanted to get a definition of it, what would that be coming from where you sit? Sure. So in the product placement in the sense of, of the film community is a non it's a way of showcasing your product without being the in your face advertise advertise in terms of advertising. Now it's also the way in getting the if you want to enhance your target market, if you want to enhance your audience perspective and really just build on your return on the investment. So the product placement is putting a product in a film to build on brand recognition and of course to get your audience to be able to see the product. And are there well, I think there are different levels, but what kind of levels do you think about in terms of okay, the way that we're going to have it? Because sometimes it feels as though the shot that we see with that product is just there so that you can see the product. So it's not part of something the way it was part of that, um, the composition of that photo going back to the split, cha this, this, this split channel. It, it's just that thing for a second or for a moment. Uh, are there different ways and tiers that people have go about doing it? Yes, you have where you have the character integration. So for instance, the protagonist or the good guy could actually interact with the product. And that can actually have a different level in terms of the purchasing power of the product. So for instance, in this particular ad, Pedro, you can see the bottle on the table, but it would also have a larger identification element if you picked it up and we saw him pour and eat the channel. And so that's when you're having that discussion with the manufacturer or the provider of the product, you can now discuss, do you want them to eat the product? Do you want other characters in the storyline to have the product? Do we want to see it on a billboard? Do we want to actually see the product in a setting? Do you want the character to mention verbally Patsy's channel? So you can have different layers and based on the type of the layer, will actually determine the cost and the spend, and of course, how you can actually measure that return on the investment. 
I think having this conversation with you, I might not be looking at things the same way. I always want to see, hmm, I wonder if they did this, I wonder if they did that. But even like the, the, the clip that we had uh, with Marshall and seeing his chocolate, it seems as though there's ways that people can integrate, not just align brands, but integrate brands. And is that something right. that you see many people doing in terms of, this is who I am, this is what I have or promote, so I'm going to put those things together so that when you see me, you're always thinking of one or the other or both of us at the same time. Oh, no, absolutely. So what Marshall would have done, that is direct product management. So for instance, you can see the product in space in the ad. And what I would have done actually, when I saw that product, I went to Peter Pitt, probably I think that same week, and I saw the product, Peter Pitt, I bought the product. And that's that's the beauty of even actually in a fun music video, he took the opportunity to showcase the product and it worked very successfully. A million views on YouTube and of course on other streaming platforms will have more viewership. And that's really the value of that product integration in a fun and exciting um, project. So that's the beauty of it. And I feel I want to do it like if we're in class right about now because we'll play another one. This one is for Reem Gourmet Granola. And then you'll take me through it and we'll play it again while, while we're having the conversation though. But we go to that now. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. It's your boy, Stephen Taylor, wishing you a happy Republic Day with this new one from Serenity, Island Breeze. Somebody's up early. And we catch us the worm, Dad. All right, Miss 10 going on 30. And what type of worm are you trying to catch today? The largest worm ever. You're not hungry, Jackie? Mm -mm. Okay. If nothing else, we know that that chicken massage properly and season well. But in terms of looking at the product, and I will also make the caveat that Reem Gourmet Granola has undergone a revamp of their packaging. So I think it would be it would pop even more if it was in the in the current packaging, as it will. But tell me a little bit about this treatment, please. Thank you. Sure, perfect. So what you're looking at is Jack Spot, which was a short film done in collaboration with the filmmaker Stephen M. Taylor and, of course, Aaron Carruth, who was the writer as well, and with Film TT in terms of our capacity development program. And the filmmaker, who is also the owner of the Ream Granola, wanted to showcase the value of the branding. So they were able to put the product within the storyline. But there's a relevance. It's granola, it's early morning, the child just woke up, you can see the milk there. And so there is that proper brand alignment of seeing the granola. It's early morning, it's family friendly, she's excited, you can see the father cooking. And there's that really nice family engaging environment that makes it real, that makes it every day. And so you can wake up in the morning and you can have rain. And what I want to also point out, the beauty of this setting is we could also advertise for seasoning. We can have a chicken company advertised there. The clock in the background could be a brand. The clothing that the guys wear could be product placement. Film and, and, and everyday life allows us to really work with companies and manufacturers to use everything you see within a frame as potential ad space. But that raises the question, though, is it a matter, why, why isn't it used? Is it uh, that people need to think about that a little more? Conversations need to be had. People think there's only one type of ad advertising in terms of when we when we advertising on product, it's just the product is not as though you see it somewhere else or in a setting or an application of it. What, what are some of those things that kind of prevent more of this being used? No, that's an excellent question. So for me, it feels like film feels too everyday. And so when you see familiar products, it's not the realization that that's a particular product that was placed there for the audience to interact with. So even with that Marshall video, every single image in that space, that's ad space. Now, the, the reason why I personally think that the, the providers and the manufacturers aren't seeing the value to that extent is it's too familiar, it's too real, versus when filmmakers are going to these companies to say, can we partner with your bottled water company or you know the furniture 
It is because the filmmakers need that in the film to be real. If we don't get the sign off on a particular product, we have to create our own product. That's wasted ad space. So if, I, if I'm not getting permission from a B-Mobile company or a service provider, I will have to make up my own telecommunications network. And that's really a missed opportunity. And so I feel like because it feels so everyday and so real, they don't realize that every time you look at a, a film, a commercial, a music video, a TV series, everything that the characters are interacting with, that is literally marketing for companies. And with that in mind, we take a short break. We come back to talk about the potential of product placement. Stay with us. We return with more. And you get a feature inside a conversation with yourself. You, you, it's pressure like that. We're speaking with General Manager of Film TT, Leslie Ann Wills Caton. And you just gave in a nutshell, you just put it down um, so so beautifully and succinctly. And but the thing though, is it a matter for is it is the onus on advertising agencies uh, in bodies like Film TT? or the brands themselves to say, hey, we can do this like this, to come up with that kind of ideation into implementation. Because we know how old those uh, ads were in terms of like the one with, uh, the one that you showed with, with uh, Slinger Francisco. There was also the one mm -hmm. with Love in the Cemetery with, with Kitchener uh, that also spoke about that, are you insured when you're doing whatever it is you're doing, no judgment. But who, 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 whose responsibility is it? No, I love that question. And for as long as I've been sitting on this chair, I've been working on really finding out exactly. I've had conversations with ad agencies. I've had conversations with the corporate sector. I've been a part of that panel. And of course, I talk to the public sector, the private sector. So where does the owners lie? And in fact, even with the audience. When you're looking at something, what will make you want to purchase a product? And it's really just the aligning of understanding the, the real value of the film industry. We can act as the marketing for the country and for the product and for just Trinidad and Tobago on a whole. So if we can come together and be very intentional with our approach in terms of what when we put Trinidad and Tobago out to the, into the World Wide Web, what do we want to say? Which products do we want to showcase as being homegrown? And so once we can work together, all of us, it's all of us, the audience, the filmmakers, the co-op sector, the private sector, um, we all need to realize that we are first Trinbegonian to the bone and all of our products, we should want to really showcase them in film and in music videos. And I really love this statement, paid is temporary, film is forever. For the next hundred years, for the next thousand years, the Rheem Granola, the, the Marshall Montano chocolate, the Patsy Pascal, that's, that's always there. And so until we can realize that it's the continuation forever in film, we can get more individuals to really see the value of the product placement. Because like it's art. I like the fact that you talk about uh, 
individual seeing the value of product placement. There's someone I know, uh, whenever she is in a certain space, there's a there's a local there was a local brand of water. It's a different jurisdiction from Trinidad and Tobago, but there was a local brand of water, and then there were brands from other places. And she would say, "No, I want this one or do bring it." And she would have that there. And it that, it feels sometimes as though it starts from a place like that. This is even before you say, "Okay, well, if we have that brand of water on a set." then we mm -hmm. can charge this amount of ad revenue. Uh, if you have that, that, that wall medallion, that mountain behind you, is that something that is intentional? Does it uh, show the artwork of uh, somebody from Trinidad and Tobago? How can we carry this thing forward? But can people right. reach out to Film TT to build a capacity in those sorts of areas? Sometimes just is a matter of just expanding consciousness sometimes. Exactly. No, that's an excellent point. So I've been I've been on a on a campaign to really spread awareness. And so any opportunity I can get, I will showcase and I will go and do talks in terms of showing the value of product placement. And of course, also talking to the filmmakers as well. How do you best approach a company with a pitch deck and talk about the value of the realism, of the significance of the story? of the aligning the product with the lead character. And of course, we love fun and we love to laugh. And so how best would you then associate the product so that every time the person is looking at the film, you remember the product, you feel good about it. And it's, it's a beautiful link that can happen. And it's a cycle in getting the audience to say, every time I look at this film and I feel good and I see this product, and then you feel like you go to the stores, you want to get this product. So we have to be consistent and we have to be very intentional. And like you mentioned with your friend with the bottle of water, even if you go to an event, the, this is why you have the product placement at events too, because now you're taking photos with the product. Now imagine if you can look at a TV series and the same bottle of water is there. Now the audience will start to feel like this is the water of choice because now every time I look at content and everywhere I go, I feel like now this water is part of that particular world and now they want to try it because that's what they're constantly seeing. So it's a repetition as well in all platforms. And the beauty of the product placement and film, you also have to come up with offline cross-promotional activities and events so that yes, I can see it on TV, but when I drive down the road, there's a billboard, there's a jingle on the radio. There is you no know, products, people talking about it in the space, there are giveaways. So how do you then tie in to create a beautiful marketing campaign with the intention of the strategic brand alignment? And with that, we want to say thank you so much. Uh, I, and because you saying that, and I still want to quote Mr. Mr. Stephen M. Taylor talking about shake it up in terms of his product. But uh, thank you very much. We didn't have the opportunity to speak to um, something that you you mentioned in terms of people approaching corporates saying, okay, well, as opposed to just saying there's a flim, these are some of the spaces that your, your brand can align and can fit into it the way I see it as well in terms of that pitch deck. But we want to thank you very much, General Manager of Film TT, Leslie and Wills Kainton. And on behalf of the entire TTT news team, I'm DK Ronsa. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you so much for joining us.